It's time to sign with a team for the Camping World Truck Series 2017 season. We've got seven offers on the table as we performed very, very well during our hot seat challenges last season. Uh, we took a win, ran up front most of the time, especially as we got into faster and faster trucks. And I have made my decision upon which team we are going to start our uh, career with at Daytona. So as you can see, we've got seven available contracts in the Camping World Truck Series. Uh, one of those, of course, is uh, Clay Greenfield Motorsports. We've got Bolin Motorsports. We've got Nice Motorsports. We've got Hitori. We've got FND, uh, FDNY. We've got Kyle Busch Motorsports and Thor Sport Racing. Now, what I have decided to do and many people, many, many people wanted me to run uh, the 88 truck. Many, many people wanted me to run the 46 truck for Kyle Busch. But I have decided to go with a custom car for Shigiaki Hitori. Two reasons I have decided to do this. Number one reason is because of the fact that... Uh, uh, we had such a great reaction, or I had a great reaction, to uh, actually getting to drive for Shiggy in the first place. And uh, secondly, apparently a lot of other YouTubers who uh, have gotten further in the career mode than I have are doing uh, the best trucks. So uh, to add a little bit of element of challenge and differentiation from those other folks who do these this game, we are going to race for Shiggy Akiyatori in a custom truck. Now, that is not the paint scheme I'm going to use. In fact, we are about to head to the paint booth after we sign with Shiggy to uh, redesign our truck uh, to fit more in with Hitori Racing. But let's see what happens when we sign for Hitori Racing. Here we go. And here you go. Hitori Enterprises is a stock car racing team by, owned by Shigiaki Hitori that currently competes in the Camping World Truck Series and K&N Pro Series East. In the Camping World Truck Series, the team currently fields the number 16 for Ryan Truex. So that is really cool. That means every team in the uh, game has a bio. So that's actually really cool. Uh, and uh, I guess we'll accept the contract. So here we go. And there you go. We're a part of Shigiaki Hitori Racing. You can see start season one. We've got the contracts there. Uh, so we've we have signed with Hitori Racing in the Camping World Truck Series. Obviously, later on, we'll be able to sign contracts with the Monster Energy and Xfinity Series. The standings, uh, we are 31st out of 31. Uh, we've got a win, which is interesting, even though we have... Uh, oh, I guess these are last season's points. So there you go. Uh, Friesen actually ended up winning the championship for last season, so that's interesting to see. Teams, uh, that's the same as contracts, I guess. Oh, I guess we could re-sign with other teams. This is interesting. So yeah, it's just for between all the seasons, you can see exactly what teams you can sign with. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if you can actually lose those teams over time if you don't perform or perform better, you gain teams. Uh, but real quick, we're gonna head to the paint booth because we're going to redesign our truck for Shigiaki Atori's team. So since Shigiaki Atori uses Toyota bodies, we are going to go with that. Uh, again, we have the number choice available to us between 8, 28, 36, and 99. I'm going to go with 99 because it's closer to 91. Uh, the base paint scheme that we're going to go with, it's kind of tough because the car I want to do a tribute to is, of course, one of Shiggy's uh, champ cars. I'll pop a, a picture up onto the screen if I can get it. I think this is as close as we're going to be able to get to it uh, in terms of a paint scheme. So it may not be exactly the way that Shiggy's uh, car was uh, in those days, but we're going to try to get as close to it as we can. Uh, so uh, we're going to go with a blue here. So I think that shade of blue will work. Now I'm working on the silver for the car. Uh, we're going to go with a Fairly light shade because the I think the silver is actually supposed to be representative of Mercedes Benz, so we'll go with that. The second stripe should be white, so we'll go all the way over and do a white stripe. Maybe we'll go with a darker gray because it's not getting, giving me quite the contrast I really want. You got to be careful because 
otherwise it won't quite look right. Uh, but for the number, we need to go with red, because it was red on the car. But it's a little bit darker there, and it'll show up a little bit better on the truck if we go with a darker number. So I think that's looking pretty good. In terms of sponsorship, at the moment we're going to go with nothing uh, anywhere on the truck, because I don't think there are any um, Hitori Racing sponsors that are available to us as of yet. And uh, as we would be a new truck in the series, uh, we wouldn't have any sponsorship pretty much anyway. But uh, as this continues on, it'll be interesting to see uh, if there are like offers or anything. We'll take a look at the rim style, uh, even though I know that uh, the Hitori uh, car used uh, black rims. So yeah, I guess we'll go with black with the yellow outline because that's pretty much the only thing we have available to us. So there is our custom truck that we are going to take to Daytona as a tribute to our car owner, Shigiaki Hitori. So let's get to Daytona Beach to get the season underway. Oh, we've got a message from Guidance Counselor Brad. I thought he'd forgotten about us. Uh, obviously, there may have been some bad blood since I crashed his truck uh, and didn't get his contract, but let's see what he has to say to me. Congratulations on your full-time ride in the Camping World Truck Series. We're all ready to see what you can do. Well, that was quick. Well, now I think we'll... Oh, we've got... Hold on. We've got the rival screen here. Uh, so I guess we can just scroll through the entire field and see uh, if there's anybody who hates us yet. Nobody hates us yet. We're friendly with everybody. But over the course of the career mode, this is going to be quite interesting to see how that goes. Uh, so standings-wise, we're right down at the bottom, back where we probably should be. Wait, we've got more things to take a look at. We're not going to be able to go to Daytona ever, it doesn't seem like. Your team will provide you with opportunities to earn more money through incentive contracts. If you successfully complete the requirements of the contract, you will receive a payout based on its difficulty. So that makes sense to me. Uh, and uh, let's see. As you do better the standings, the team will reward you with better payouts. Uh, and here you go. Here's the uh, contracts. Ooh, wow, they're going to give me a choice. Ooh, let's see. Okay, I want to go with challenging. Let's go freaking with challenging. Let's do it. Five race incentive for 32 grand. Yeah, let's do it. So, the goal of Daytona uh, is... I guess they want, uh, that's hard to see. I guess they want top fives, wins, and most laps led over the five, over five races. Uh, oh, they want four wins in five races, uh, and then top fives. It's kind of hard to see, to be able to, I guess you need to just see how many of those you can complete, uh, as we're about to head, finally head to Daytona and, uh, get the season underway. So here we are, ready to go for the next era 500 or 250 or whatever the heck it, this uh, race is called. It's got a weird name, uh, but the only thing you really need to know is that it's Daytona, our first plate race in the career mode. 32 trucks, and it's gonna be it is gonna be a pretty wild race. So here goes nothing. Let's see where we qualify. So coming across the line. 30 second. Yep, that'll about do it. Uh, I didn't feel like, oh wow, two seconds off the pace. That is, that is par for the course in uh, general NASCAR heat terms. Uh, uh, but uh, I guess we'll be coming from the back. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, meet some of the team's requirements and uh, get the season started at Daytona. So under the lights, a plate race to start the season. The crowd's cheering. We're underway. What can we do? Can we back up our impressive performance from the intro season? Or are we going to completely choke on our aspirations? We'll find out. So I'm just going to kind of hang back here at the start. Not a big issue as long as I can't or don't lose the draft as Spencer Boyd tries to look down to the inside. Couldn't quite get there yet. I'm going to try to get a good run here into turn three because it feels like the truck's kind of starting to fall back a little bit already. 
There we go. A little bit of a uh, little bit of a run there on the inside. Underneath Matt Mills. Gonna make up one position. Need Macek is just up uh, on top of Spencer Boyd there. Not sure why he's running that far back. He wasn't running that far back early in the or in the intro season. We're gonna make it three wide. Down to turn number one. Gain a few more positions. Underneath Chavos, which I think I was finally told was the proper pronunciation. So we'll work with that. As we get up behind TJ Bell here, one of the trucks that we could have potentially taken. And TJ having a little bit of trouble there getting into turn three, so we'll back out. Drive a bit uh, conservatively here. Obviously, we could lock ourselves into the playoffs really early on by winning a race, but, uh, you know, I'd rather just get a solid race in to start this thing as we get under the white line or under the double yellow. That's not what we need to be doing, even though the game won't penalize you for that. And it really should, by the way. Uh, I want to be legitimate with this. So I don't think we gained really any ground, but we are staying on the bottom, making up some time as the trucks on the top are starting to fall back as TJ Bell, I think, makes a bad decision there uh, going to the top lane. I think he's going to uh, quickly find that he's going to fall uh, through the pack quick, very, fairly quickly as we continue with two lanes of truck traffic. It's like driving on the, the uh, freeway right now with all the trucks. But uh, we're going to try to get to the inside of Clay Greenfield. Not going to happen because I uh, caught the apron there. We're going to fall back just a little bit. TJ Bell going to get a little run on the outside. And we've only got one lap to go on the stage. So it is flying by this race. I hadn't even realized how short the stage was. How many laps have we even run? Like three? And eight laps remaining on fuel for a four lap stage. Ay ay ay. aye. These are, some quick, these are some quick stages, and the second stage is going to be even shorter because of the, the stage uh, caution as we've got uh, three wide going into turn number three. Could not uh, make that four wide. It was That is not the move to be making coming to the end of a stage. We're not going to get any points in this one, but as we start to move up the field here coming to the oh, ooh, checker flag, almost got into the side of the 20 there. Don't want to be doing that. The uh, checker flag is out on the stage. We'll come home 22nd. But I think we can move up because we're really starting to move at the end of that stage. And uh, we're not going to need to pit. Nobody else is pitting. Uh, so we will uh, stay out on the uh, racing surface and get back to racing here. Oh, on the top lane. Maybe should have lost a position so I could have stayed on the bottom. But we'll see. We'll go for some stage points here. As I didn't even see who won the first stage. I think it may have been Crafton. So he gets to first playoff point. And we're going to bully Chastain a little bit here. Another one of the trucks we had a contract with. We had a contract offer from... As that was almost very bad. And now we're in trouble because we are hung out to dry on the outside. And I forgot to shift into fourth. I think that was probably more of a problem than the rest. I was wondering what was going on and I forgot the bloody shift. Oh, what a terrible thing that I've just done. Well, now we're in trouble. Now we are in trouble because everybody's passed me on the outside. Interestingly enough, we didn't lose any laps on the stage as we have a truck in trouble. It's Corbin Forrester. He falls back and that's going to split the pack up quite a bit here. Let's see if we can hang with everybody. Thankfully, we've got a drafting partner in Travis Quaffle. And he might push us up into TJ Bell, which may get us back into the top pack. It's weird that we didn't lose any laps on the stage. It always seems like we lose laps in stages. We didn't lose any of the plate track. That's probably the way it should be, but it's not the way it is in real life. It looked like a truck got really wide out next to the wall in turn number two. Hard to see exactly who it was. We're going to get here behind TJ Bell down the back straight, but he's moving up behind Chastain, trying to get a draft off of him. I wish, I wish Quaffle would have kept going with me there. But now we get to see what the plate racing physics are like when everything's spread out a little bit from a truck having trouble in the mid-pack. Everything's fairly close together. I mean, this would have been like 
<laughs> you know, the second lap of a full field in, in uh, Heat 1, so, or Heat Evolution, I should say. So we've got two laps to go in the stage. Doesn't look like we're going to get any stage points at this one either, but uh, we just shoved TJ Bell underneath of Ross Chastain, so we might have a run here if we can work the bump drafting properly here as we're just going to keep just nicking off the back of Bell. I'm going to try to tandem down the back straightaway if we can. And we really gave him a shot. Look how far he's moving out. As long as we don't lose him, that's going to be great. Looks like a truck has taken a big lead, unless that's a lap truck. Ooh, as I got on the apron just a little bit, trying to get, under, get underneath TJ Bell. That was a bit of a mistake as well, as we're going to have one lap to go on the stage. And it looks like that truck that got out to a lead is starting to get swallowed up by Matt Crafton. So it's a battle between... Oh, that's the end of the stage. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize there was on one lap to go on the stage. We must have had a yellow. Uh, that's the only thing I can assume that happened. So it seems like this is going to be a pretty straightforward race strategy-wise. We've got 17 laps to go. We'll pit. We're probably going to have one green flag pit stop during this race. Uh, I don't think I have any damage, so I don't need to repair it. We'll take four tires while we've got the opportunity, two cans of fuel, and see what we can do coming to the end of this one. We're back on the outside in 20 seconds. I'll try to remember to shift this time and see if we can make some ground up as we get racing here so into third and make sure you shift up into fourth this time David as we've got 14 laps to go in the race and 11 laps on fuel so that's the story there no real shocker that uh, we're going to have at least one green flag pit stop but here we go three wide Chavos and uh, Boyd on the outside Getting behind Myatt Snyder. I think that's how you finally was determined that you pronounce it. And there's Duzat out there. So Duzat doing a lot better than he usually does. Uh, they must have improved the truck mightily with the money I earned them for winning a race as Chavos goes to the outside. Everybody's getting real crazy now. Everybody knows it's the last stage. The first two stages were kind of setting the stage. And now it is on. We'll see what we can do. It's pretty much just lines and lines and lines of trucks. We just bump draft with Chavos as much as we can, but nowhere to go. Or Chavis. Is that is that how you do it? Chavis? I just remembered that, that maybe somebody said it was Chavis. We'll say Chavis for now. But uh, it looked like uh, Cody Coughlin moved to the outside there. So hard to go three wide consistently here at Daytona. Just trapped in traffic. We got trucks behind us, trucks in front of us, trucks to the side. I'd like to get to the bottom at some point if I could get down there, but Mills is down there. Uh, maybe I could have done it. Oh, maybe we can. Oh, it's going to be so close with the 12 truck down there. Spencer Boyd. Now we're going to swing all the way down to the extreme bottom. Make it three wide as we're about to go through the trial. three wide. Don't necessarily want to do this. We'll bounce off the back of uh, Travis Quaffle. Bounce off of him again. Try to make it three wide with Duzat. Not going to happen. Duzat's actually going to have a nice run on the outside. Oh, and that's one of the VKR trucks almost getting into the wall. I think that was Briscoe. And again, going to try to cut it down next to into the inside line. Quaffle just hanging tough there. He's going to move all the way to the top. And now we're going to have some more three wide action. As Chastain's going to cut in front of Friesen, and we're going to have a heck of a run down off of turn four, but there's nowhere to go with it. We're going to keep bumping Friesen as much as we can. He's just going to keep holding holding the line. And Spencer Boyd starting to suck up into that draft. Got 11 to go. And eight laps of fuel, so again, going to need to pit unless uh, something spectacular happens here. But everybody else is in the same boat. As Chastain moves into the center, that was a mistake. I wish I could have shoved Friesen in there. I couldn't quite do it. Now Friesen's going to move to the outside, but I'm not going to have any drafting up on the bottom. Unless Spencer Boyd, Spencer Boyd moved down there, but he moved down there too late, or I didn't see him. So we're going to try to get a draft off of Friesen here as a bunch of trucks tried to uh, get a run on me. I'm going to try to get a run on these this lead group here as they go three wide mid-pack. 
couple of the Thor Sport trucks to the outside, definitely the yellow ones of uh, Crafton and uh, I don't remember the other truck driver's name at this point. I would remember if I saw it. I think he was an ARCA guy until just recently. But we're getting three wide here. Still couldn't get around Friesen. Briscoe and Quaffle. The other guys in the outside lane looks like JJ Yealy up there. Now possibly moving down to the inside of Friesen. Let's see if we can side draft a little bit with Friesen. Uh, moving back just a little bit. Sparks flying. Oh, there goes Spencer Boyd trying to move to the outside. Regan Smith is back here. He was one of the guys that got screwed by the truck having trouble early on. Still just maintaining pace on the bottom. Can we sneak to the inside of Friesen? Can Chastain come down and help us draft? No, he's not. But it looks like Regan Smith is helping us try to make this third lane on the bottom work. Not going to happen, though. Friesen has too good of drafting help just in front of him. We've got six laps to go on the fuel. Can we get to the inside of Friesen this time? We got help from Regan Smith. No, we had to get a cut on the double yellow line. It's still not working. Yaley going to move down to the bottom lane. That's going to thin out that top lane, possibly make it a worse lane to be in or possibly a better lane to be in. We got a lot of trucks behind us. Sendrick, Smith, Boyd, Smith making the move to the inside. We are getting stuck in the middle. Made a mistake not blocking Smith, but I should have stayed with Friesen there. I think we got, we're cleared to the inside. So we got Todd Gilliland just ahead. Actually met him at a K&N race yesterday. Very nice guy, fun fact. So I'd prefer not to make him a rival. Let's see what we can do with Regan Smith. Now we've got a run. We've got a really nice run, almost a 190 mile an hour trap speed going into turn number one. Let's see what we can do to the outside. Travis Quaffle kind of going slow, but there's nowhere to go. It's a wall of trucks, but Regan Smith really making some moves down the inside. He does not have any drafting help. Todd Gillen not really anywhere close enough to make something happen. And we're three wide, almost getting three wide with Quaffle. Now very close to Regan Smith, a little bit of contact. We're stuck here, just can't really make anything work because of just the way the plate racing works. We've got seven laps to go. We should be coming to seven at the line. Briscoe making a move to the outside. I tried to work with him. He wasn't quite going. We could pass Quaffle, I think, at some point. But Friesen is just too hard to pass right now. There, there's the top lane opening up with Briscoe. Can we get there? No, he moves back down into Quaffle's lane. We've still got Gilliland down there. Let's try to get going here. Try to get going. Oh, just nowhere to go. There's just nowhere to go once we get up to 21st spot. Smith and Gilliland clearly have better trucks as we got a truck way up there. Looks like Christopher Bell almost in the wall. You gotta expect pit stops are about to happen, so I'm trying to stay in the outside lane for when they all start diving in. Try to get a run here. Spencer Boyd is now to the inside of the pack, really forming up once again. Six laps to go in the race. Gillen moved up to block me, so we'll give him a shot. Try to shove him off into turn one. Looks like, oh, I thought Regan Smith was gonna move up to the top. Smith had moved up to the top, we would have been able to sneak in behind Quaffle and get around him. Not going to happen. Spencer Boyd now moves to the inside. And this is just some crazy racing mid-pack. Let's see what we can do. We're, I think we're going to be able to pass Boyd. He has no drafting help right now. And there we go. Come on, Gillen. Nah, not going to happen. Or, excuse me, Briscoe. I saw a blue and white uh, car and uh, thought it was, it was Gillen. Still nothing happening, and here come some of the pit stops. Having some troubles there was Ross Chastain. He got a little bit of a issue coming into the pits. Almost uh, it looked like he had to slow down. We got fuel alarms going off now. Briscoe still running up top. Not sure what you're doing up there, son. It ain't gonna work. As we are gonna come into the pits this time around, see if we can gain some playoff po or uh, some points. I'm gonna say playoff points. Uh, we, we got to gain some points points in this uh, season as it looks like we're going to have an okay possibly finish depending how all this goes, depending on uh, how the trucks who chose to stay out or chose to come in on early are going to race with us. 
as it should be most of the field coming in this time around. Still some trucks staying out. We're going to be hard on the brakes in following everybody in. So just one can of fuel. We got a six sec second stop. There was a little bit of trouble getting into the pits. I saw it go up to 62 miles an hour. I thought I was going to get a speeding penalty, but I guess because I got hit, we won't get the black flag. As you can see, we do have damage from the AI pounding me going into the corner. Looks like we got Truex behind us, so we'll have some Hattori racing uh, tandeming, hopefully, as we get back up to speed. Oh, whoa, whoa! Almost got LePage there. Why cars going faster than us. Tommy Joe Martins, what was he thinking? It looks like he's going to hold up uh, John Hunter Nemechek there. I made a mistake by going to the outside of Quaffle, I think. I think we're going to be in trouble now, or maybe not. We're going to see how everybody packs back up as we got trucks on fresh coming out of the pits very, very quickly. We're going to try to build the speed back up. Takes about a lap with these plate engines. Got, who is this behind us? Wayne Self, I think? No, it's Yaley. So let's see if we can get a run as we got three to go in the race. We're running 20th, and there's a major, major pileup. And we got a yellow, thank God, but look at the crash. Holy cow. Somebody must have paged absolutely incredibly. We're going to stay out for sure, but surely some of those guys who were in that wreck are going to be severely damaged. Uh, here we go. We've got five laps of fuel, three laps remaining. This is going to be a green-white checker. Holy cow, what a crash that was. So here we go. How many of these trucks are going to be disabled going back to the green flag? We think some of these guys are going to be slow as we get back to the green. Underneath Snyder. We may have touched the yellow line there. Look at Regan Smith's truck. Front end all torn up. Somehow he's still continuing in the race. Well, let's go for some points here. Oh, and we got slow down. Slow down in the bottom lane. We're getting spun out. Exactly what I thought was going to happen. Noah Gregson's around. Uh, I think it's slowed down everywhere. What is going on? One truck slow on the bottom. And that may be the end of our race. Who was that? Clay Greenfield. Don't know what he was doing up at the front. But I got caught out. Now we're going to be in serious trouble coming to the checker flags oh man that sucks Todd Gilliland and Austin Hill well off the pace as well not sure what's going on there man I thought we would have a good finish here but this is uh, turning out to be quite an unfortunate way to finish it looks like we may catch Tyler Young here running all together in a group should be much faster than him but you just never know as we get down the back straight. We're not quite able to. Well, we're going to have to block two lanes of traffic as Gilliland and Hill are deciding to really go for it here on the final lap. And it's not going to be a great truck deb uh, debut for the full season as we come off of turn number four. Disappointing, disappointing finish here at Daytona. Going to bring it home 27th. Could have been much more. But uh, unfortunately, circumstances took away our chance at a points finish. So 27th, not, not an amazing result. Corbin Forrester last in 32nd, as you can see the big one, uh, the replay of the big one. Grant Infinger was the guy I was thinking of uh, earlier, and he ended up winning the race. So shows me how stupid I am. Uh, dang, just, just not, just did, got caught out by the big one, first of all. I think we would have had a really good finish had they not piled up. And then, again, uh, with damaged trucks leading the race, Clay Greenfield, the 68 truck, was leading the pack to the restart. He really should have pitted because clearly he had some serious, serious damage from that crash. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is as uh, we're going to see what we have money-wise uh, from Hattori Racing. And, yeah, just the generic 7,500. 
uh, even though we did get a decent payout from finishing 27th, though I can't imagine what it would have been if we had won the race. So let's head back uh, to the team shop and see if uh, uh, Guidance Counselor Brad has anything to say to us. So, oh, we've got a message from Ryan Blaney. Interesting. I didn't know that uh, Blaney recorded uh, dialogue for this. Let's see Guidance Counselor Blaney. Congrats on your first truck race. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do this season. Boy, that was quick. Oh, we got another message. Uh-oh, from Austin Sendrick. I feel like he may be mad at me. Let's see. Let's see if he's mad at me. Some of the guys don't like the way you're driving. You got to clean it up or you're going to make some enemies. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, no. Wendell Chavos is not happy. Not happy on Twitter. Uh, everybody's mad at me. We've got Austin Sendrick mad at me and Wendell... Uh, Ch I think he's mad that I can't pronounce his, pronounce his name. Oh dear. You gotta be more careful on the track. You totally ran into me. Well, maybe don't go so bloody slow. Oh dear. Here we go. We get to find out about the rivals uh, mode. Of course, Kyle Busch is the most, uh, and Danica's upset. That's very, that's very accurate. We've got, we've got neutral Jimmy Johnson upset Danica and rival Kyle Busch. Anyway, uh, Rivals will be more aggressive towards you on race day. So it's like the uh, Indy 500 evolution uh, system. And here we go. Chase Elliott says, Congratulations on reaching 500 fans. People are getting to know you. It's really the first milestone you reach in NASCAR. Finally got your stripes. Well, I do have my stripes, but uh, everybody hates me now. So for the next race in the career mode, which we will take a look at in the next video, is the active Pest Control 200 which was actually our first race in the truck series. So you would hope that we can actually, hopefully, uh, make some team requirements by doing a top five or possibly a win or possibly a la most uh, laps led ach achievement. So until then, this has been David Land on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching Daytona. We're only going to do single races for kind of some of the marquee events. We're going to go back to the style that I was doing earlier for Atlanta and the next race where I was doing two races per one video. Uh, but for stuff like Daytona, Eldora, and later on when we run like Indianapolis, uh, we will do one race per video. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you at Atlanta.